This is something that happened a few years ago. This was back when I was in college, but it was my senior year. For that school year, I lived in a small and old house a little ways off of campus. It was a pretty typical college neighborhood with a bunch of other similar houses. I shared the two bedroom house that I lived in with one other person, my roommate named Jason. We had met each other in college and were friends. So an event took place a few months into the school year. Jason and I were both always coming and going from the house. We both had classes at all sorts of random times, and we also both worked jobs part-time as well. So one night, I came back home to the house after a late class. I had been gone basically all day since the morning, because I spent the time in between my classes studying in buildings around campus. After arriving back to the house, I parked out front on the side of the street and walked up to the front door. I went inside and was going to go upstairs and change. However, right when I got inside, something seemed off. The first room in the house was the living room, and it looked a little bit messed up. Also, the door that leads to the basement was wide open, and we always kept it closed. I knew that Jason was gone at work until later, and of course, I figured that he was responsible for the mess and the open door. It was not really like him though, because we were both pretty clean and picked up after ourselves. But obviously, it couldn't be anybody else. I thought maybe he left in a hurry and had been looking for something. Either way, it wasn't too big of a deal. I just picked up the few things that were on the floor, and then I went over and closed the door. I was going to go upstairs and change then, so I walked up and then went to my bedroom. Then I took a quick shower, changed clothes, and then went back downstairs to get something to eat. After going back downstairs though, I saw that the basement door was once again open. This really creeped me out. I had a bad feeling about it immediately, but I thought that maybe Jason had returned home early from work. I called out his name, asking if he was back. He obviously didn't go upstairs or I would have seen or heard him, but when I called out, I got no response. I decided to go and look in the basement. At our house, we had this old, unfinished basement. We mostly didn't have anything down there except for the washing machine, dryer, and a few boxes. I took like one or two steps down the stairs. As soon as I did, I immediately saw somebody down there. It was dark, so I didn't get a good look at all. It appeared to be a man though, and somebody who I did not recognize. He was just barely in my sight. After seeing him, I could not believe it. But then he started to turn, and I think to look at me. But right away, I turned around and quickly went back upstairs. Then I closed the door behind me. Then I ran upstairs and went back inside of my bedroom. I closed the door and locked it behind me. After that, I got out my phone and I dialed 911. Right as this was all going on, I started to hear the guy walking around downstairs. I spoke with the 911 dispatcher explaining the situation. But right after I did, I heard the man start to walk upstairs. I just hoped that he wouldn't try to get in my bedroom. My room was the first one at the top of the stairs to the right. Jason's room was a little ways down and to the left, and he also had his door shut. The only other room up there was the bathroom. So after the footsteps reached the top of the stairs, almost instantly they were right outside of my door. I was really nervous. Then they turned and tried the door handle. I'm so happy that my door had a lock on it. When the door didn't open, the guy walked further down the hallway. I heard him opening Jason's door, which was unlocked. Then he went inside there. This really creeped me out because whoever this guy was knew that I must have seen him. And instead of leaving, he chose to go upstairs and seemingly go after me. I did my best to keep calm. I just hoped that the police would arrive shortly. The man stayed inside of Jason's bedroom for probably two or three minutes. Then he came back out. He seemed to go near the bathroom for a few seconds, then he turned around and headed back towards my room. Except this time, he walked past and went back down the stairs. After going back down, I heard him walking a little, then the sound of the front door opened and shut. I figured that he left, but I still didn't leave my bedroom. Just a few minutes after that, the cops got there. I went down and told them what happened. They looked around, but the guy was gone. I called Jason and told him about it too. He came home a while later, and unfortunately, a few things were stolen from his bedroom. We never found out who did it. 
Also, I'm pretty sure whoever this guy was just walked right in. We didn't do a very good job of locking our door because we were always coming and going. But after that, we did. This is something that happened back when I was a kid. I was 12 years old and I lived with my parents in a pretty average house. So this took place during the summertime. Obviously I was home from school and I liked to play video games. So on this night in particular, my parents had gone to bed and I stayed up pretty late gaming. By this point, it was probably like one o'clock in the morning. I was inside of my bedroom and just about every light in our house was on except for a small lamp on my desk. I did not have headphones in, but I just had my video games at a pretty low volume. So my bedroom was right off the living room and the front door was connected to that. As I was sitting there playing video games, I suddenly heard the sound like somebody was trying to open our front door. Of course, it took me by surprise and instantly I was suspicious. I didn't really consider our neighborhood to have much crime and nothing like that had ever happened before that I was aware of. So I paused my game and sat there listening. I heard whoever it was try the door again, and then things were pretty quiet for a few moments. I decided to get up and look at that point. I quietly got up and walked out of my bedroom and into the dark living room. There was just a little bit of light coming in from the windows, which had shades mostly covering them. I walked over and looked through the front window. When I did, I saw nothing at all. Whoever had been at the door was gone now. I didn't know who it was or why they were there. I thought maybe somebody accidentally went to the wrong house. Either way, they were gone now, which made me feel a lot better. So I walked back into my bedroom, sat back down and continued my gaming. I really wasn't that tired yet. I was already in a habit of staying up late most nights and gaming. But less than five minutes later, I heard another noise. It was this strange noise that I don't even really know how to describe. Not quite a scraping sound, but similar. It was coming from the back side of the house and where our back door was. When I heard it, the same feeling from earlier came back. Was somebody trying to break in? I was honestly too scared to go and look. I stayed there in my bedroom, just listening to the noise and hoping that it would stop. I tried thinking of logical explanations, but I really couldn't come up with anything. The noise continued on though, much longer than when the person had tried entering the house through the front door. After several minutes, I didn't know what to do. I considered my options. I could go and wake my parents. I could go to the phone and call the police, or I could go and see what the cause of the noise was. I did not have a cell phone, and there was no phone in my room either. So to do so, I would have to go to the kitchen where the landline was. Ironically, that's also where the back door to the house was. But before I could do anything, I suddenly heard the sound of the back door opening. That was one of the scariest moments of my life. As soon as it happened though, as a reaction, I just bolted from my parents' room. I left my bedroom, ran down the hallway, and then went into their room. I woke them up and said that I heard somebody enter the house. My dad ended up getting up and walking to the doorway. He quietly opened it and seemed to be listening. He must have heard whoever had entered the house walking or something. He told us somebody was inside and then told my mom to call the police. Then my dad shouted loudly that the police had been called and he also shouted that he was armed. Now, I don't think that my dad had a gun. He certainly didn't have one on him at the time, but I think he was just trying to scare the person off. Surprisingly, it must have worked because like 15 seconds later, he said that he heard the back door close. We stayed inside the room though until the police got there. Then my parents as well as me had to talk to them and answer questions. I told them everything that happened. Unfortunately, I never got a look at the person at all. I couldn't tell you if it was a male, female, or anything about them. The police tested for fingerprints and they also told us that there had been a few reported break-ins in the general area. Luckily, we didn't have anything stolen. After that, nothing else like that happened. I'm really glad that I was up late playing video games and was able to alert my parents about it quickly. I live alone. I have for several years, and I have a house a little ways from the city. 
This happened a couple of years ago. One night, I was just relaxing, sitting on the couch and watching some TV. My living room has the couch at the back side of it, right next to the main window. This window looks out to the front yard and street. So as I was watching TV, I would occasionally casually look out the window. It was a nice and quiet night. By now, it was past 10 p.m., and we never really got much traffic on our street other than the neighbors who lived here. You see, to get to the nearest really busy street, you had to take about three quiet ones. So I remember I happened to notice headlights coming down the street out of the corner of my eye. When I did, I looked over to see the car. It very slowly drove by, and it was a dark-colored four-door sedan. It was a little bit older as well, but I didn't recognize it as any of the neighbors. The car soon passed by, though, and kept on going down the street. I looked back to the TV. But probably about one minute later, I heard the car sound again. I looked to the street and noticed the same car driving down once again. It was like it took a lap, going to the next street over and then back to mine. This time, the car slowly passed by my house again. Except now, it went even slower, and then it pulled over to the side of the road a little ways past my place. It was in front of the house across the street, and one over to the left. I assumed it to possibly be a friend of whoever lived there. After the car parked, I saw the doors open, and then three men got out. They were pretty far away, so I couldn't see that well. But after the men got out, they appeared to all be wearing dark clothing. And not just that, but they also appeared to be wearing ski masks as well. I couldn't believe my eyes. Things got even worse as I watched the men walk across the street and then start to enter my yard. I quickly ducked down on the couch. I looked over and made sure that my front door was locked, which it was. Then I literally crawled across the living room so that they wouldn't see me. I made it to my hallway and then I heard the men trying to open the front door. When it didn't open, I heard a knock which I was not going to answer. About a minute or so later, I then heard a sound at the back door of first somebody trying to open it, then knocking. I was positioned just inside of my hallway and near my bedroom. I had enough information to call the cops, so I took out my phone and I dialed 911. I didn't want to go into my bedroom or the guest bedroom though, because I thought that the men might try to break into either of them. And as I was on the phone with the police, I heard a knock at my bedroom window. The three men all seemed to be at different locations. I wasn't sure where to go, but I knew I needed to hide. So I went into this closet in the hallway. I kept mostly blankets and stuff in there. I went inside, closed the door, and covered myself. After being told the police would be there in a few minutes, I hung up. I was really hoping that the men would not break in. But my hopes and the back window were both shattered just moments later. I heard the crashing glass and I realized that the men were getting inside of my house. I didn't know who they were or why they wanted to get in my house. I soon heard footsteps of the men walking inside, and then I heard them start talking to each other as well. I couldn't really make out most of what was being said though, but I did hear one of the men ask another if anybody was home. The footsteps moved around, and soon somebody entered the hallway. I kept as quiet as I could. Somebody went into my bedroom and a short time later into the guest room. They got just feet away from the closet that I was in. I really thought that they were going to open it, but they never did. The intruders continued to walk around the house and communicate with one another. This went on for what to me felt like forever. But then at one point, I heard one of the men say police. I didn't hear the context, but I wondered if the police had got there. The man didn't sound alarmed or panicked or anything. He kind of casually said it but the men then walked towards the back door and then seemingly left pretty quickly. Things were then silent. About 30 seconds to a minute later, there was then a knock at the front door. I knew this had to be the police, so I left the closet and I ran for the door. I didn't see the men inside at all when I did. I saw an officer on the front step and I opened the door and told him what happened. My entire house and property was searched. The men's car was still there parked on the side of the road and within an hour, they were located several blocks away. It felt good knowing that they were caught. That was by far the scariest thing that's ever happened to me. I'm really glad that I was able to stay hidden.
I have a three bedroom house that I live by myself in. It has two floors and a basement and I really enjoy living here. The neighborhood is nice as well and I've gotten to know several of the neighbors. Last year, something terrifying took place though. So I work pretty standard hours, although one of my bedrooms in the house I have converted into an office to get extra work done. I was gone at work one day though, and I got a phone call from my neighbor who lives directly across the street. His name is Dan, and he's retired. He's a really nice guy, but does not usually call me. I was wondering what was going on, and when I answered, Dan asked me if I was expecting anybody at my house that day. He knew that I was gone because my car that I drove every day was not in the driveway. I told him no, why? Dan said that he had seen a man enter my yard and seemed to be at my front door for a while. Then the guy went around into the backyard. Dan said that it just looked really suspicious to him and he wanted to call me about it. He also mentioned that the man had gone into my backyard area about five minutes ago and he hadn't seen him since. He asked me if I wanted him to call the police. I told him yes, because I felt helpless being stuck at work. I figured it would be best for them to come out and look around. It was just strange for this to be happening in broad daylight. So Dan called the police, and he told me that he would call me back with an update. I sat at my desk hoping that nobody would break into my place or anything. About 30 minutes later or so, Dan called me back. He said that the police looked around, but figured that the man had left. They said that all my doors were locked and windows appeared closed and fine. Nothing seemed out of place, and after searching my front and backyard, nobody was located. They figured the individual may have tried to enter and passed by to another property. Dan had never seen the guy come back around and leave. He also never saw where exactly the guy had come from. I felt a little bit better, but I was also really creeped out by the whole thing. So I left work and went home about an hour later. I got back, pulled into the driveway, and walked around my house. I wanted to see things for myself, and everything seemed fine. So I then walked over to the front door and went inside. Then I started to go through my normal after work routine. I first went upstairs to change. When I got to my bedroom though, I opened the door and immediately saw something for a brief second. It was so fast I didn't know what it was at first. But then I realized that somebody was hiding behind my bed. I just barely saw a part of them. I didn't say anything, I just left the room, ran back downstairs, and then left my house. I got into my car and called 911. I stayed there in my car for the next few minutes as I talked to the police. As I was sitting there in my car waiting, I saw a guy come running out of my front door and then went out into the street. Then he ran down it until he was out of my sight. The police got there several minutes later. I was able to give a decent description of the guy to them. They searched my house in case there were multiple people, but it was just the one guy. He ended up being located later that evening. I didn't know who he was, and I don't know why he chose my house. In my opinion, my place doesn't stand out at all. I'm hoping that nothing like that happens again. This story happened back when I was in high school. It was summertime and I was going into my senior year and was living with my parents at home. My older brother was off at college at the time because he lived there working a job. So it was just me and my parents. I worked a part-time job at a local restaurant to make money. So I worked mostly nights and weekends and one night I arrived home from work pretty late. This was kind of typical that I would get home late at around midnight or so. I would get home, eat something, unwind for a bit and then usually be sleeping by 2 a.m. Of course, this was just a routine on nights that I worked late. So I remember that I worked two nights in a row. After arriving back home from work on the first night, I got inside, changed, and then sat on the living room couch and had some food. My parents had already gone to bed by now. I was just on my phone and also half watching TV as well. At one point, I got up to get something, and when I was returning to the living room, I noticed a car driving by out the front window. The strange thing about it was the speed of the car. It was driving extremely slow. It was not stopped, but just going really, really slowly. I found this odd. The car passed by the house and kept going. I was interested and I continued to watch it. The car was white, had four doors, and appeared to be an early 2000s model. 
I didn't recognize it. The car went further down the road and then appeared to turn around. After this, it came back down the street, except much faster than before. I assumed it to be somebody who was lost, but the car returned a while later. This was maybe 20 minutes after I had first seen it. The car drove slowly down the street again and went all the way down. Then it came back once again going extremely slow. I didn't really know what was going on. After that, I did not see the car again for the rest of the time that I was up though. I soon went to bed and didn't think anything more of it. Now the next day, I worked basically the exact same shift at the restaurant. After getting home from work, once more, my parents had already gone to bed. I sat down to have some food again, and like the previous night, not long after, I noticed the same car driving down the street again. I found this to be strange. But after that, the car ended up pulling into our driveway. This was really weird. I wondered what exactly was going on here. After the car parked, I kept watching it out of the window. A man and a woman both got out of it. I didn't recognize them, except they both seemed to walk directly to the back of the house. This was really strange. I walked over to the back side of the house, and as soon as I got there, I saw the man and woman approaching the rear door to the house. That led out to the patio. I moved away from it quickly. Then I heard the sudden sound of glass breaking. When I heard this, I quickly ran into my bedroom. I got out my phone and hit 911. As soon as I did, I heard the man and woman both walking inside. I really didn't want them to go towards my room. I was afraid if they were dangerous or not, and I had no lock on my door. They were not approaching yet, but I feared that they would. Then I had an idea. I quietly turned on the TV in my bedroom and put it to YouTube. Then I searched for an alarm sound, put the volume all the way up, and played it. It sounded as though the house alarm had gone off, except we did not have a house alarm at all. This seemed to actually work, because I heard the back door open less than a minute later. I then went to my parents, and they had already woken up from the noise. I told them what happened, and the police were already on the way. They arrived probably about five minutes after this. I told them what I could. The man and woman were both gone though, and unfortunately, I don't know that they were ever found. I'm just glad that my alarm idea worked.